Hello ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome to the Iron Man experience a podcast about society life art culture entertainment movies sports cricket and in this particular episode pets welcome to the burfi diaries it's a burfi diaries is a podcast or a series of episodes which we dedicate to our pet burfi a golden retriever now 5 months old and his experiences integrating into human society and in this particular episode i share three specific incidents one about let's talk about the pit bull rot filer ban in ghaziabad and the impact of it i know you already know the incident so we'll talk about the impact in some other corner of the world some other corner of the country what does it leave behind as an impression number 2 we talk about the stray dog issue in most cities and what's happening and what's to know and how to handle it if there are objections in and around you and number 3 of course the a small incident during the course of morning walk that burfi faced uh, today and uh, there are some interesting observations there as well so stick around till the end and you will find something very meaningful very useful to share with those people who probably are confused uh, you know those who hate dogs probably will not even see this video even if you share it with them but this is not targeted for them i don't think they will convert any time in their lifetime so i'm trying to reach out to those set of people who probably like pets but are not as well informed objectively and nobody takes the time to educate them and they could be any strata of society right and um, so this content is trying to reach out to those set of people who probably are on the center they're not going on the negative side as in hating dogs or pets but they are in the center they're not like i don't like them beyond the point but i'm neutral so i'm trying to reach out to those set of people and if you happen to know somebody please do share this with those set of people and who knows we might increase the pet community as it were so let's dive in so this is the ghaziabad incident where the pit bull rottweiler uh, are now banned post the unfortunate incident you already know about the incident if not i'd redirect you towards the mint article published on 16th of october 2022 it kind of narrates the decision taken by the gmc the azibad municipal corporation to ban three three breeds that of rottweiler pitbull and doggo argentino in in a house and as a result of this there are a lot of existing pet owners abandoning their dogs they're leaving them on the streets on the roads and they are then getting into further trouble interacting with the indies or the stray dogs and this is creating a big a uh, problem for the society the impact of all of this is not just felt in say a noida or a delhi ncr the impact of this news and news travels fast right is faced all across the country i stay in the southern part of the country in a place called bangalore and there the news is traveled and it has taken a different proportion again i don't have an adequate sample data set to say i spoke to 10000 people and they all had the same thing to say but in the limited diaspora the limited area that you know we interact with you get the sentiment right so i'll give you an example the first impression for those set of people who don't like dogs their belief system has already multiplied three folds that dogs are dangerous they do, and their common uh, rebuttal is how am i supposed to know who which dog will bite and which dog don't they all have teeth i also argued with them you have teeth too <laughs> humans are different there are criminals and then there are normal regular people who are not criminals so not everybody is out there to harm you but that logic doesn't seem to sit well with them they have this inherent dislike and it could be because of a past trauma air quotes on that you know they could have had a bad experience and i don't blame them beyond a point but it is important to realize that we have had bad experiences with fellow humans as well haven't we you know they will argue well i didn't need you don't need 15 injections if uh, you have a bad experience with uh, a fellow human i said yeah you might not need 15 injections you could need 15 stitches you might get shot you might get killed you might have so many other problems so again i'm not trying to get defensive here of course there might have been an incident where it has probably been less than pleasant i'm i'm being polite here but that doesn't mean that you paint everything with the same brush 
somewhere you have to realize that there is a reason why a particular animal behaves in a particular way. And largely it is to do with humans. If you have seen, especially the stray dogs, people are hitting them with stones, pelting them with stones, they hit them with sticks, the cars honk past them, they flash the headlights and scare them essentially. Some just do it for fun. Some do it because they are scared and so they want to scare the dog even more. So what does, they seldom wait to think the impression that leaves behind in the dog's mind. Well, I, I behaved in a particular way very aggressively. What does it, what impact does it leave in the dog's mind? That's something that people don't think through much. They think, ah, what will the dog know? Well, they do think, they might not think exactly like humans. They're very close to that. But they do think they will have some impact on them. They, they, it causes them trauma. It causes them depression, anxiety, all the emotions that a normal human goes through as well. And so it's important to realize that while this incident is unfortunate, there are three sides to the story. Your version, my version, and the truth. Oftentimes, the news media covers only one side of the story. Yes, it was unfortunate that people got bit, but what is the backstory to it? I'm trying to search. If you if you have found it, please do leave it in, in the comments below. What is the other side of the story? Why did this happen? Were they mistreating the dog? Were they not feeding? Were they beating the dog? Were they keeping the dog tied outside? Did they do the necessary homework before getting a pit bull or a Rottweiler at home in a crowd, crowded society? These are, in some sense, hunting dogs. They are fierce protectors they they are aggressive by design by their dna by their gene they need to you know be out there in open fields and so if you constrict them in a apartment small apartment and then keep them caged locked they will get agitated frustrated so my point is were you aware did you do all this homework and if you knew about all of this and still got it then do you blame the dog to act on its natural instinct and i'm still little unsure and I'm not being disrespectful for those afflicted parties, but I'm still unsure that why would a sudden provocation happen like that? Did something happen prior to the incident? So if any of you listening to this have found out what led to this incident, please, please share that information. It is very important to let the country know, let everybody know that, look, it's only one side of the story. Here is the other part and here is the actual truth. So that never comes out in my view next let's step into the fight club yeah the street fight club you often find on your way back from work at night the street dogs the strays attack you they bark at you people are often scared they have had very bad incidents where strays have bitten them their point is well we never provoke them we just walk by and then they bit us the population density is uncontrolled of stray dogs. They are hardly neutered. They're not vaccinated in many cases. They're just left to die. Add to that, there are humans who pelt stones at them, hit them with a stick, chase them, scare them. There is no food that is uh, being provided to them. So they have to fight for food. They fight in the garbage lots. They fight in any other place that there a morsel of food is there. Often they die out of starvation lying on a pavement now there is a system in place there is the municipal corporation which helps there are dog catchers that are there but i don't think it is effective enough i don't think it is adequate enough there are just too many of them like in a one square or maybe two kilometer stretch of road in many places you will find as many as 100 150 strays that is a lot it's not like one or two it runs in maybe 70 or 100. That is a lot. And so people who are cycling or walking, those who become familiar, they are somewhat comfortable, but many, most are scared and they scare the dogs even further. So it becomes like this vicious cycle where each is scared of the other and therefore the apprehension comes in. So the question is, what do you do about it? What do you, how do you manage? There is the other instance where the pet owners they adopt an Indy, which is a very noble thing to do. Um, and they do adopt them, but many cases, and I, and I say this very uh, respectfully, in many cases, they don't train them well enough. They just, 
it's like I am adopting, I'm doing a noble cause and then they are street dogs. So they don't need any comfort. They don't need any luxury. They are low maintenance. They can eat whatever they just, I will take them out to poop and pee. They will anyway street dogs. So they will take care of themselves. And even the water is not adequate sometimes or oftentimes the one of the parents refuse to buy even a bed. Like They don't need any bed. They can just you know, lie around. And my point is, if you didn't want a pet, then why did you get one? <laughs> right? If you have a pet at home, even if it is a indie that you've adopted, then you have to train, you have to groom, you have to spend time. Yes, you have to spend money as well. But this is all you knew. This was something in your control. It was not like, uh, 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 what do you say? It was not uh, thrown at you. It was not dumped on you is the word I was looking for. It's not, you know, forcefully given to you. You made that decision. Now that you've made the decision, then you have to go through the whole uh, bells and whistles. But clearly, not everybody can afford a very expensive uh, royal canine or food or, you know, expensive toys. But that doesn't mean you treat a stray dog like how the ones are on the streets, right? There has to be a difference when the dog is at home. And so somewhere, the training, the grooming, the changing the mind probably needs a little more effort because they're already scared. They're vulnerable. They're in a mind state, state of mind that, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And they have this base instincts, right? So not enough time is spent in understanding the stray dog and then grooming them. They just, most people get it because well, it's easy to maintain. It's not an expensive dog. I didn't even pay enough, you know, any money or I paid some token amount. So my point is you can't have a pet with so many disclaimers attached to it, right? It's a part of your family. It becomes a part of your family. It's an extension of your family. And so if probably you have to lay, raise the level of sensitivity, awareness, how to train one, how to groom one, how to uh, manage expectations. All of this is required. Maybe you need a need to invest in a trainer if if you find it difficult to train probably you need to have a trainer and so keep all these things in mind especially those people who are thinking of adopting another uh, indie uh, stray dog then please remember they have this natural instinct of attacking you know, other pets especially if they see a fancy dog you know who's very comes from a different pedigree different breed and especially the guard dogs and the family dogs if they see a small size family dog they tend to attack and so somewhere the training has to happen right somewhere that education has to happen that sensitizing has to happen it's not easy it's it is not easy for the you know the classical home dogs as well and so either ways it's a time commitment it's an investment so please make sure if you know someone who has adopted uh, a, a street dog, by all means, applaud them. By all means, salute to them. It's a noble thing to do, right thing to do. However, you also know that is not enough. Once you have done it, what's next? How? It's, it's a journey. It's a journey of evolution, understanding. So are you spending enough time to understand your pet now that he or she is with you at home? And so that brings me to some of the three things that happened today. Number one was an experience in the elevator while we were on our way for a morning walk. And we were sitting peacefully on, on inside the elevator when this elderly gentleman walked in. Elderly meaning he must be in his 60s or maybe 70s. And he completely freaked out, right? He had this expression, oh my God, this dog will leap at me and bark at me while Burfi was sitting absolutely. And he's a, he's a docile creature. He just sits peacefully and he loves humans more than he loves his fellow dogs. But clearly, the person doesn't know that. So I, I kind of stepped in and said, don't worry. It's under control. It's with me. The leash is on and it's a puppy. It's still five months old. You don't need to worry. So no, no, no. What if it bites? Haven't you heard about that Noida incident? The guy pulled out the, the owner's intestines. I was like, oh my God, have you heard the whole story? Do you know what happened? Why it happened? No, that we don't need to know why it happened. Net of the story, it happened, right? So at that point, I realized it was not in my place to argue with the gentleman. They have such deep-rooted fear because the news propagates so much that only the bad part sticks. And, and that's how. And it's not that it's in, uh, in inaccurate. 
probably the news is true. However, they do not give a 360 degree view of the news, why it happened, when it happened, basis what, what was the past treatment, was there a problem with the dog, was there a problem with the owner, no such news on that. Only the last bit of news is shared for sensationalism, that dog bit its owner and so a wave of mistrust, it multiplies across you know the other part of the country where people have heard on the news or in the WhatsApp university some forward must have come as always and they tend to believe it as the ultimate truth that look this happened and they don't question it my concern is yes there is a piece of news can you not double click it can you not understand the subtext what happened the reference to context people don't want to do that people just are saying this has happened and so now my previous belief system is multiplied and so the gentleman refused to come into the elevator until i really i also made a point not to uh, depart or let let go and say okay I'll carry on I, I stopped the elevator I said listen you have to understand the difference between a stray dog a guard dog and a family dog they're different then you have to understand where they're coming from so how will I know which dog is which said so that was a rot rottweiler or a pit bull this is a golden retriever said so I don't understand the difference I still explained to him patiently that please don't get upset you have to learn to start believing facts and data. And it, when I say it is my responsibility, I will make sure that he doesn't come near you, even sniff you. Is that all right? So after much, and it, we did this for about five, seven minutes while the elevator was still stopped. And I was getting uh, worried that, you know, people must be waiting downstairs and everything, but I didn't want to abandon the experience. So I somehow managed to convince the gentleman. He stood it to the, near the exit, almost like, oh my God, the moment. You know, the guy will just pounce on me and all that, but that clearly never happened. So, but he was very unhappy with this experience because he generally tends to love humans. Further down, when we exited the elevator and we were walking across the path, there was the security guard, big burly guy, strong guy. And he completely, you know, was taken by surprise. And I was like, why are you surprised? Aren't you the security guard? You should be. No, no, no. These dogs are all, you can't trust them. I said like, please don't make such sweeping statements. And and idea is to not, you know, bulldoze them and just because we are the residents and he's a security guard, we shouldn't do that, right? So I spoke to him at length again, repeated the same exercise, peacefully made him understood. And then said, sir, nobody explained this to us. And in our experience, when we cycle to work, we often have a very bad experience. And that's where I'm coming from. And I was almost um, pleasantly surprised that there was that much more honesty about this gentleman, this security guard than what I encountered in the elevator, where it was just a plain straight bias. They just want, they were closed, right? They, they didn't want to open and receive new information, which is not the case with this gentleman, this security guard, who was very at least open, despite being a little apprehensive and scared. Further down, we were uh, in the garden and we were walking. And, you know, I have the player, um, the ball, and we play around in the garden a little bit. And uh, there were these, again, big six-footer joggers, you know, big, you know, beard, strong lads. And they were jogging and they suddenly flipped out. Oh, my God, how have you left the dog without a leash? You can't do this. This is not done. You shouldn't be doing this. Like, totally freaked out. And Murphy was not even close, not even like 10 feet close. It was that far. And I was like... You are scared. You are like seriously scared. And so before I could explain to that gentleman, he kind of jogged on. And so we couldn't get a chance to um, explain and repeat the story. And all this is happening within a space of one hour. So you can imagine. Finally, I was not feeling all that great. And I was like, ah, this is not turning out to be a good day. Maybe we should revisit this in the evening and come back again and go out for regular walks, right? As we were approaching our residence entrance again on our way back, there was this old lady. And before the same incident could happen again, I just paused. And I was expecting a similar reaction because the lady kind of turned around and almost like was with a frowning look. But here's the difference. In this instance, the lady turned around and actually came towards us. What a lovely dog. And this lady was must have been a septuagenarian or an octogenarian. But that was not the aha part. The aha part was that she never had a pet. She never had could have a dog, but she was an animal lover. She loved animals. 
and she loved pets and so she sat down she made friends she spoke to burfi and burfi was very happy and so was i and i was like oh my god you need we need many more people like this and so all those people who get scared need to know that people like you normal regular people who have never had pets once they understand once they are sensitized like for example the first thing you don't do is pet on their heads right you let them sniff below their eye line if they like you they'll allow you to pet you and if they don't they will move back so somewhere learn and i'm sure wherever you live there will be some pet owner somewhere make friends with them make the that effort to go say hi to them and understand what's the best way to be pet friendly or be pet sensitized if there is a word what's the best way to be pet sensitized or dog sensitized if you will and i can assure you it will be a a very meaningful experience as it has been for many of us and so i was happy that the day, mornings never show the day right then that's the word that's the phrase that came to my mind sometimes we begin the morning in a very sad or a difficult or a gloomy note but that's not how necessarily the whole day goes by and so when this experience happened with this uh, elderly lady i was you know restored from a confidence level in humanity that uh, it's not all that bad there are good people and that's why the world is still spinning well that's all the time i had on the burfi diaries on the iron man experience a slow burn podcast for the wise woke and or the wobbly it's meant for everyone it's a straight talk it's a simple talk it's a slow talk right in the world of shock and awe attention grabbing this is counterintuitive you might think but that's by design i'm only trying to reach out to a set of people who rather have a peaceful conversation not expect like a quick fire restless 1.2 minute listen that's not my target audience my target audience is those or those set of people and i know admitted that there might be uh, i'm not expecting this to become viral or you know become very big and where there are million followers or anything i'm happy if there are a few hundred who uh, enjoy this kind of content this kind of pace and this kind of a no frill straight talk and that's the ideal audience i cover a whole bunch of topics right iron man experience largely focuses on life outside work so you have cricket movies entertainment society culture pets geopolitics world world issues and and the inferences of it and just not stating a particular bit of news but there is the other podcast which is called bus talk bus talk is about your work life everything that is happening at work it's not a management mumbo jumbo big talk it's not like a tech talk not about technology but it's about people management career insights a whole bunch of other things and that's on audio format so i'll leave the link below you can go to the podcast directory which is www.podpage.com/bustalk where you will get all the work life related podcast and for the iron man experience of course we have youtube we are also there on ionisms on podpage and i also do a swell cast so if you are on swell do search me out on uh, swell and you will hear a micro format so if you do have have uh, less time but still like a straight simple a short talk like less than 5 minutes then switch over to swell and you will hear a whole bunch of episodes there either ways i'm trying to reach out to a particular audience which which i'm guessing if you're still listening to this that you are the one so thank you can i just say thank you uh, that uh, you took the time and the patience and uh, invested enough attention to listen to this kind of podcast so until we meet again stay well stay safe and keep listening to the iron man experience this is your host iron peace out